Here's another example of how we calculate airflow for maintaining the concentration of a contaminant at or below a specified level. Again, we've already looked at one problem. Uh, this is the second problem, problem two, for this partic particular type of calculation. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the problem. And this is more like what, you, what would be seen on the CSP exam. And it's not the clearest of questions or problems. And you'll see that on the CSP exam. I purposefully made it a little bit harder to understand. It's not as straightforward um, as some of the example problems I've been using in class. But again, you might see a problem worded like this. If I was really wording this so that the uh, test taker would understand what I'm asking for, I would word it differently. But here's what you might see. Um, in an operation, eight pints of substance X are evaporated every hour or per hour. Substance X has a TLV of 0.075% by volume in air and a specific gravity of 0.79. The chemical formula for substance X is CH sub 3 sub 2 CO. The atomic weight of carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. What is the value of the general ventilation airflow rate to keep the concentration below its TLV using a factor of safety of 6? And that last line there, the way, and I'm taking this from, from other problems I've seen other people create. Instead of saying, uh, using a factor of safety of six, why the heck don't you just say safety factor of six? But you will see wording. It's just, it's, uh, it's unnecessary words. It's wordy. It can, can be confusing. And I sometimes think test takers do this intentionally just to see if the test taker can um, figure out the problem, a poorly worded problem. So... Anyhow, that's, that's kind of a sidebar, one of my gripes about certification exams. Uh, sometimes we try to trick them up too much, and we shouldn't be tricking them up. We should be writing questions that are easily understood by the test taker. But anyhow, for this problem, just like example one in the other video, um, you're going to use this formula. And we're not going to talk about all of the different variables in this formula. We've already done that. We've done it in class. We did it in the first example video. So, But once we have the numbers for all of these different variables, it's as simple as plugging in and doing the calculations. But again, this is tricked up a little more. There are more steps involved. It doesn't come right out and give you the information you need to plug into the formula. First of all, we need to calculate the evaporation rate. That's just like the other example that we looked at. Actually, it's a little easier in this example. Uh, all we need to do to calculate the evaporation rate in pints per minute is divide pints. It gives you the pints already. You don't have to convert from gallons or liters or anything else. Pints already, and it's pints per hour. So we need to convert that hour to 60 minutes. Then once we convert the hours to minutes, all we need to do is divide the number of pints, eight, by 60 minutes, and there is our pints per minute evaporation rate. So we have that, but there's other things we need to calculate. Uh, we also need to know the molecular weight of substance X. It doesn't come right out and give you that molecular weight. It gives you the chemical formula for the substance and the atomic weight for each of the components in the substance. You have to take this information and calculate the molecular weight of the compound. And here's the basic formula that you would use if you were being strictly mathematical and how we lay everything out. Uh, but we're going to identify the number of car carbon atoms in the molecule. There are three carbon atoms. There's one there times two is two. Then we have another carbon atom here, so that gives us three. Whoops. And we need to identify the number of hydrogen atoms. There's three inside the parentheses, but everything inside the parentheses needs to be multiplied times two. So two times three is six, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. 
only one oxygen. Once we have that, we just multiply the three times the 12, the six times the one, the one times the 16, add everything up, we come up with a molecular weight of 58 for this particular substance. Molecular weight is 58. So now we have that information for that variable. There's one more that we need to, we need to do some pre-calculations on to get ready for the formula. Our concentration level, we want that in parts per million, but it's given to us in 0.075% by volume and air. Uh, to turn that into a parts per million concentration, we convert the percent to a decimal, which we've done here, percent to a decimal, and then we multiply that decimal times 10 to the sixth power, or one million. Uh, 10 to the sixth power is scientific notation for one million. So 0 0.00075 times one million gets us the parts per million concentration that we need, 750 parts per million. Now we have everything that we need for the formula to plug in and do the simple calculations. Plug in our specific gravity, which was given to us, uh, plug in the evaporation rate, which we calculated here. Plug in our K factor, or safety factor, which was given to us. Uh, molecular weight in the denominator here, which we calculated, is 58. Then our parts per million concentration is 750, which we calculated over here. Now we just multiply everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator. And these are the numbers we end up with when we when we do those multiplications now we divide the numerator by the denominator and we find that we need uh, 5,853.6 cubic feet per minute flowing into that area to maintain the concentration level our target concentration level and I want to want to say something about using this formula and shooting for a target concentration level in my opinion, best practice for me would be to shoot for a target concentration well below the TLV. Uh, in this problem, we're shooting for a concentration level that is the TLV for the substance. If we were using the PEL, we would want to shoot for a level below the PEL, uh, preferably one half of the PEL. And one half of the TLV would be good also uh, as a as a as a, an objective uh, for our ventilation system. And again, once we have the, the volume that we need, then we need to take a look at our ventilation system to determine if it's providing us the volume we need to maintain the concentration level at or below our target concentration. All right, that's it for this example. Again, be prepared. CSP exam is, is not easy. And I, they, they sometimes make it harder by poorly worded questions. Uh, and one thing, when I say poorly worded, I'm, I'm talking about just the wording. Having them calculate the molecular weight, I don't have a problem with that. Having, them, having you convert a percent to a parts per million, I have no problem with that. I don't have any problem with the question having the test taker do these pre-calculations. That's, that's part of the game. But I do, I don't like the way it's worded. It could be more simply worded. But you will see problems that aren't as simply worded as they could be on the CSP exam. And that goes not just for quantitative problems, but also uh, problems or questions that don't require any calculations. Sometimes they are not worded as well as they could be. All right, I'm done. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video.